Good morning, everybody. If you're new here, my name's Graham. And I run Stable Horse Training. And uh, we have a new horse coming in today. So I thought I would talk just a little bit before that horse comes here in the next 10 to 15 minutes about what I do to prep for a new horse coming in. So let's start with that. And then uh, after the horse arrives and things calm down, we'll come back and talk to uh, you guys about this new horse. Now, this new horse is a BC Wildie. She will be going in here because I think it's a great location for her. I'd like to keep Little Miss up here. She also is a BC Wildie. And in case you're wondering what a BC Wildie is, I have a video just for you. I will link in the description below. And, but to summarize really quickly, essentially they are uh, sort of feral horses that live out on the ranges here in British Columbia, Canada. People capture them, they get adopted out, or they get sent to slaughter. So we're trying to save as many as possible. And uh, I will have three here. Hello, little. What's happening? How you doing? She says, I'm a little nervous. You're kind of noisy. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do when I'm bringing in a new horse in is make sure that every other horse has food. And the reason is, is if they don't have food, they kind of are a little bit bored. And uh, it's exciting when a new horse comes in. It's exciting for us, for you guys. Very exciting for the horses because they think that uh, it's a big deal. But what we don't want them thinking about is that there's any competition for food of some sorts. And that's just an innate feeling inside of them. You can't change that. So Lena also has food and is a very messy camper. Lena, you are... Filthy, what are we going to do with you? Look at your back. Huh? Goodness. Hello. What do you need? Lena being the, um, she's a real, uh, I don't know how to put it, like a real strong presence. She tends to stay calm in most cases. She calms other horses down. She calms people down. She's fantastic. So I think having her here in between, little miss who stays at the top, Lena who will be calm and quiet, and a reasonably flat and comfortable paddock, because this horse comes with hoof, I don't know if I call them, call them hoof issues, but she's never been trimmed in her life. So like little miss, she will receive her first proper trim here and maintained for the foreseeable future while here. And then uh, Mr. Wild is down here. He has a brand new paddock. Look at him, he's going to come over. Oh, maybe not. He says, yeah, I don't know. You don't look like you have any carrots. And uh, this paddock's holding up well. He has kind of messed around in that back corner a little, but meh. What are you going to do? Horses are horses. And the rest of the horses stay the same. We've got Gracie here, who's chowing down on some food. She has food, he has food. And that's what we want. We want them to be preoccupied, or at least occupied. Um, horses that stand around with no food uh, tend to be bored, and they will find other things to do. And if a new horse is here, well, then all their attention will go to that. And I'd like them to not be that way. Hello, Yoka. You are looking absolutely fantastic today, aren't you? Hmm, somebody needs a brushings. I'm sure that'll happen. So, uh, other than that, uh, there's actually not a lot to do. I was originally had the idea, maybe I'd put her in the arena first, but I have seen her feet, and I think that it would be a better idea to just have her go into her paddock. Luke, you are a messy monkey, man. We gotta clean up this place. That's actually another thing that I would like to do. I've run out of time, though make sure and just Roni's over there <laughs> you missed Roni ah he's eating I know he's not gonna come out um, but everybody's solid everybody's set up and good um, so that's that that's my my major prep work and the idea of where we when sometimes when new horses come in here I'll just chuck them in the arena and we'll let them run around and stuff like that and sort of sniff the place out. But like I said, I'd like to trim her feet first, kind of like when little miss arrived here, she had poor feet uh, due to never being trimmed. So I want to make sure to get them trimmed before she goes running around. So when they run around on this ground, cause a lot of horses are in places where they're running around on soft, muddy, mushy ground. And it actually doesn't affect their feet much other than to sort of slowly slap them outwards cause they're wet. 
and the mechanical pressures of of their body when their foot lands and kind of splats outwards and stuff like that instead of what this is it's a much harder ground sand and underneath is compacted gravel it tends to produce more mechanical force on the hoof when it's long so uh, we want to deal with that first and that shouldn't take long i don't expect that to take much longer than a couple of days and just like little miss at least to be able to get it done enough that we're not going to have those cracks and chips coming off um, cracks and chips are natural reactions of the hoof when they're too long so they crack and then they chip and then they're trimmed self-trimmed but we don't want that we can do better so she's going to go here in this nice little paddock she's already got some hay had a lovely donation of three uh, one inch hay bags and so i'm using one of those here it's fantastic for you know like a she's already on hay bags so it's good but uh, these ones here um, are great uh intermitter intermittary intermittary is that a word it's intermediate intermediate between sort of like a one and a half or a two inch bag and my actual one inch bags that i have here that'll be great it's actually perfect for that so thank you to anonymous donor anyhow so we've got uh i don't know probably about 10 minutes before this horse arrives that's my spiel on when new horses get here what do i do and uh i'll see you guys shortly for when that horse gets here well after 20 minutes of chitty chat Here's our new girl. As mentioned, she is a BC Wildy 7, as far as we're aware. And her name is Maya. So, what's first? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. She's settling in nicely. Uh, hasn't really been moving around too much. Most horses are calm. It's only been about 20 minutes or so. She's still checking the place out. Mina's eating, you see? Everybody else is just chill. There's a couple of little calls here and there, but overall, quiet. Now, as most BC Wildies are, she's a thinker. And um, she's really thinking this through. She's wondering what's going on, where am I? What's happening? But, first thing we need to deal with is her feet and i'll see if i can get down here to show you a little bit and uh, have a little bit of before video but if you look here you can see she's self-trimming a little which is actually quite good we want to see that and same with this front foot here sort of a little bit of a of a, uh, a notch there you can see that is self-trimming <laughs> don't know what startled her but uh i like that her head's kind of low i was down low so maybe she thought maybe 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 she'd be down low as well and uh you can kind of see the cracks on the front so we're going to deal with all of that and get these things all sorted out that's our first step right after she sort of settles down a little bit I'm gonna stay down low. She might reach. Who knows? But she's an interesting horse. When I met her, she was uh, quite sweet. I'm not going to really kind of infringe on her space too much. Let's see if she wants to come over and hang out a little bit. She might. She's got lots of food. <laughs> Tons of food. Uh, we'll see what she needs. As you can see here, I was talking about earlier, um, her owners have brought her what I what is called a two inch bag. I'd almost say it's about a three inch, but very big holes. This is good, actually. It's a good little starter. This looks like some very nice hay. We've got similar hay here, and but just smaller holes, and then a bucket of uh, a little bit of uh, grain. So we'll see what she thinks of the location. Right now, she's just sort of relaxing and taking it in. She had a bit of a trail ride. And uh, I believe sometimes these twitches are a little bit of the muscles um, 
sort of releasing you know, the stress that comes from shell riding. She hasn't been inside of the uh, shelter yet. I'm not really sure why, but hopefully she will go pretty soon and have a little nibble. Now we've got an interested horse. <laughs> Her first horse to meet will be Luke, as always, as he is the ambassador. And uh, he does really well with meeting new horses, as we've talked about in the past. She won't come over, so I'm going to actually see if she'll let me greet her a little bit. We'll give a little fist bump, right? Nope, oh, she wouldn't reach. So I'll come over here. She might be thinking about water. She'd like to have a little drink. But it's also new. Very interesting. Supposedly it was only her second time in the trailer. Or in a trailer. We had some major floods not too long ago. And they had to evacuate. And she had to get in a trailer for that. And supposedly she did really well that time as well. Here you can see actually on this side. Um, I don't want to get too close. But you can see those notches that are happening with her feet those are natural uh, breaks of the hoof wall that are actually fantastic indicators of where to trim to usually they don't go past what they need to i'm actually very interested in the twitching that's going on so we're going to observe this together and see if it stops sometimes i have heard uh, now I follow a little bit of Jim Masterson stuff and um, I actually ended up asking him a question a couple uh, a while ago and uh, and I asked him because I had a Mustang that was here that kind of did something like this and I said what is that and he said it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a sort of an involuntary response to release something like that I'm paraphrasing so don't quote me and tell jimmy that i said something that he said so i'm paraphrasing that there is some form of release that happens sometimes in horses when they come down from somewhere and they'll sort of twitch interesting stuff but she's quite chill she does look reasonably peaceful there's lena come over to say hello perhaps Nice. Lena's, like I said, Lena's a real good sort of corner, cornerstone or a, a pillar of horse society around here. She uh, introduces peace and calm interest. So that's a good thing. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably just let her sort of chill out for a little bit. Um, and, uh, and just go about my chores so she can get used to routine a little bit around here. Hopefully that has been interesting. I might, I might have a little bit more for this video once we um, establish a bit of a relationship. And I might do a bit of a, a video about that separate. Uh, but we'll see if I come back. If I come back, great. And I have something more to say about today. If not, <laughs> that's the end of this one. I'll see you guys next time. But uh, I think we'll probably come back. She's, she's an interesting horse. She's really doing some thinking and I like that. So, but that's it for now, for now. So, she's all settled in. We did uh, just a little bit of work for sort of trust and relationship building, <laughs> I guess I could call it. And then she's come on in here finally after probably about a couple hours and uh, come in to eat some food. And what I found interesting as uh, you guys have probably already seen, if you've seen the short, but she's not eating the stuff that's sitting in the three inch huge whole bags that my horses would devour, utterly devour. She's choosing the tiny whole hay bag, which is fantastic and making good work of it. Look at that. Some people really worry about horses that have to eat out of these small whole hay bags, but I can tell you, horses don't have an issue. And especially with these ones. These ones aren't um, not very small holes in, in the long run. And uh, horses just go to town on these things. Let alone these. Um, 
So yeah, so she's settling in quite nicely. It is raining again. We've got it's a little windy, a little rainy, but whatever. So I'm gonna let her settle in for the day. And then we've done a little bit of stuff, just getting okay with being touched. I've managed to touch her from nose to hip uh, and halfway down her front leg. So getting her used to the idea that I'm going to come in and groom because hoof trimming is grooming. We must treat it as grooming. And, uh, and as such, um, all of the other things that we do, that we connect with them for grooming uh, should be solid. And uh, that's what I've been working on. And now she's just chowing down. She's happy. I brought her some extra water just in case she didn't want to travel all that way. Because why? I'm a nice guy. I don't know if I really need to do it, but she was sort of indicating that the corner wasn't sort of the best place to be. Although she has spent the majority of her time right there, as you can see. Very little over there, if any, and none there. So she's kind of traveled there, there, into here, and eating. So it has been fantastic. A great start for her. Um, she's alert. She's aware. She's looking around. She's wondering. We had some cable guys here putting in a new line to the house. And uh, they had a big truck with a bucket and everything. And she didn't really freak out about that. So fantastic. A little more acclimation to things for her. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. And now I'm going to leave her be. The rain is coming down harder. A little bit of wind. And uh, we'll call it at that. And now I'll see you guys in the next one.